Selma prayed tonight. She thanked God. I forget now, but, but about a preacher. How can they hear except they have a preacher, right? Well, she meant in that, she said it, or I know this, that it isn't just the preacher, but it's the truth that he represents. How can they hear the truth if the truth is there, but nobody to present it? So to this end, when you and I walk this week again, when I'm back in Columbus teaching, then the people ought to be able to see the Father. Bless God, it's up to me to work that word and to make that word living to those people that they see God. You're the same. Now, in Jesus Christ, he was God's only begotten Son because he was the only one in whom he ever created soul life. You know that? He never created soul life in Adam, right? But in Jesus Christ, he had to create soul life within Mary so that she could bring forth the Messiah. This is why this word says, in the beginning was the word, God communication. God has never left himself without communication. As Dr. Velk said tonight, he didn't use these words, but I was thinking of it, it is written in the stars. He said something about the heavens. That's what I'm trying. The heavens declare his glory, something else shows forth his handiwork or something. Perfect. Okay. The heavens declare, you see, God was always speaking. Remember that scripture, their line is gone out. What is it? Their line is gone out to the end, and their voice or sound is heard. Remember that? Let's find it. Uh, yeah, that's, their sound is gone out. Remember? I've got to be in there. You find it? You remember that? Hmm. Well, somebody better grab a big concordance back there if we can't find it. It's got to be in there. You remember what I'm talking about, Dorothy? It's Old Testament. Now, is that also in the Old Testament? Boy, I thought it was in the Old. Okay, Romans 10, 18. I'll look at that a minute here. Huh. Where is it? That's the one I was thinking of then. Bless your heart. Thank you, Liddy. Now... Read me Psalms 19.4, Jan. Right. Their line is what? Through all the earth. And their what? Words unto the end of what? The world. Now, in the, in the King James, and I'm glad you saw this in Romans, the line, the word line is the word sound. Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of what? Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, it's in the opening part, verse 4. How many verses in there? Yes. What? 14 verses. I haven't worked this thing for many years in my mind, but I think it's the first six verses or seven. I don't know how many deal with the, the heavens and then the rest of the verses deal with the earth. What? Right, the law, right. First six. 
Then there's then there's a trans you know, moving on, and then the last verses deal with the giving law. In other words, God in the beginning, before Jesus Christ manifested himself basically via two great media. One, the heaven. The other, the law. Now the heavens declare the glory of God, and this is the sound, the sound, the line, the sound went into all the earth and their words, the words of us. Their sound went into all their, and their words unto the ends of the earth. The, the, the line that the stars, the heavens have to declare, the words, this is his communication, don't you understand? God communicating to man before it was written. Before it was written. This is why in John 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word. And this Word in the beginning was who? God. God communicating to man via the stars and later via what? The law. Then the next phrase. And the Word. The Word. Jesus Christ was what? With God. With is the key to it. The word is pros, P-R-O-S. Means identification with yet distinctly independent. Jesus Christ was in the foreknowledge of God and he was with him. Look, were you with him? Jesus Christ at any time? That's right. This is what I wanted you to say. The scripture says that he knew you and chose you before the foundations of us. Then that's a long time before you're born. So he must have known you from the beginning. Well, then you were with him. That's exactly the key, you you were with him just like Jesus Christ was with him. Yet none of you have ever been physically up there. Jesus Christ was not physically up there, but there is a difference between you and Jesus Christ. I know that. But I wanted you to see the point that we have been with him. Now, this particular Jesus Christ who was with him is the word pros, means identified I forget the usage I have this in the foundational class notes but it means to be identified in God's foreknowledge with him but yet distinctly independent when Jesus Christ came was he distinctly independent <coughs> distinctly he was Jesus Christ you could see him you could talk to him like I can talk to Mr. Sharp or anyone else we could, he could talk with him. He was distinctly independent, and yet he was one with God. And this is tremendous because the Scripture teaches he always did the Father's will. I and the Father are what? One. See it? All this will fit together. Now the third one in the first verse. And the Word, the Word, the Word, the revealed word, the Bible, was God. That's it. So if you take this verse apart and put it together accurately and your Bible fit all the way through from Genesis to Revelation, this is what you have. In the beginning, you have God who from the beginning communicated on demand via heaven and then via the law then Jesus Christ the creative word this is the greatness of it then the written word now I know what you're going to say well how come you didn't put the written word first well if you like it much better you can the reason I put it in this fashion is because in the greatness with which I can see it biblically, God stands first. His Son, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and then 
the greatness of his written, revealed word, right here, the word. That's why I put it that way. Whether this order is correct, I do not know. If I had greater light, I'd say more, but if maybe the revealed word was before the created word of that verse, I do not know, but I know this is, pardon? Well, I've taught it before, and I've said you can put it either way. I don't know. But the reason I've said this again tonight the way I've said it, because this is the way I feel regarding it, that the greatest thing is God, and then the second is his creative word, which is Christ Jesus, and then the revealed word. But I know that the revealed word came before the creative word in part, the Old Testament was given. The Old Testament was given, and other things before the coming of Jesus. But the Old Testament was simply given to lead us up to Christ. And therefore, I'd like to put it in the third place instead of second. Then in verse 2, I think you have a tremendous verse of Scripture recapturing all three of those things which are written in verse 1. The same! The same! There's your answer.